Okay. Thank you for your introduction. Can you just confirm that you can see my um, slide? Indeed, I can see your slide. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Deborah Lim. And today I'm going to talk to you about my research project, Sir Hans Sloan's Information Architecture. In my talk today, I'll cover a quick overview on the background of my research, my research objectives, project progress, and I'll end with a possible future project stemming from the work that has been done so far. Sloan was a well-known doctor, naturalist, and collector. He was a keen collector, and in order to keep track of his ever-growing collections, Sloan and his assistants devoted a great amount of time documenting them using his own private cataloging system. Therefore, Sloan's own manuscript catalogues are fundamental to unlocking his intellectual legacies. As part of a collaborative project between UCL and the British Museum, five volumes of Sloan's manuscript catalogues have been digitized, then transcribed and encoded as digital data. They were encoded by the project team in line with the project modified schema of the guidelines of the text encoding initiative known as TEI. On this slide, you can see a photo of the manuscript that allows for interactive viewing, such as zooming in and out, along with a transcription. I have included a link for those of you who may want to explore the catalogs online. So now on to my research project objectives. The first one is to leverage the markup of the catalogs to create new outputs that are amenable to further computational data analysis. And the second one is to provide a critical analysis of data modeling and its potential impact from a collections data perspective in the context of early modern documents. So the key concept of collections as data initiative is to encourage computational use of digitized or born digital collections. It also promotes interoperability and usability. Collections as data really urges cultural heritage institutions to view their digital collections as more than just mere surrogates of the original. Now I'm going to give you a brief overview on what my research project entails. So there are three main items I'd like to discuss. So the first one is automatic extraction of targeted data such as place and person names. So this means to extract all person and place names that have been encoded in the miscellaneous catalog in order to produce new outputs that um, can and then um, the digital methods can be applied. Secondly, it's assigning a unique ID to each place and person name identified. So it is absolutely necessary because of the variations of different spellings of people and place in the catalog. Finally, it's linking with the CDOC CRM. So linking with the CDOC CRM is to improve the existing data model in um, TIXML as it can show relationships between entities such as um, place and people and improve interoperability. So on this slide, what I'm trying to illustrate is that this is um, an iterative process. So I start with a document analysis and once this was done, I had to go back and forth between the other two steps. So editing TIXML as well as data cleaning and extraction of person and places in Python. So overall, I had to revisit each step multiple times in order to refine the final output. Now I'm going to talk you through my document analysis, um, the approach that's taken. There are two main parts I'd like to highlight. So prior to writing a script to extract the targeted data, it was really important to look at the TIXML in order for me to understand how these elements are nested. So before I could extract these um, in Python, I needed to manually inspect the documents in order to understand the data structure. So as you can see here, there are place and um, place name and person name elements circled in red. 
And if you look at the inside the person name element, there are other elements such as high rent and ad rent, which are used to capture additional information. These kind of things needed to be considered before extracting the data using the script in Python. So one thing I'd like to highlight is that the project's team to focus was on the act of modeling. And due to how these catalog entries are encoded, there are certain challenges we are faced with when approaching, I'm sorry, <laughs> when approaching um, the, um, approaching this kind of um, documents as data. I also needed to um, inspect the manuscript for some anomalies and irregular occurrences. For example, when there is not enough space on the page for the catalog number 447, as shown here, it is continued on the opposite page with a plus um, sign connecting to the original catalog number. As these symbols or signs are not encoded separately, there's no easy way to identify them programmatically. So that is shown here, you can see um, the catalog entry for 447 does not include the full description and it ends with the plus sign. So when it, it reads um, found at plus and then the paragraph ends. So when the team was encoding the catalogs, their aim was to produce a literal copy of the manuscript as it is. This meant not applying fixes to the data, such as concatenating the descriptions in the example shown here. So for us, this creates challenges when parsing the data programmatically. Hence, it's been very important to examine the manuscript as well as the XML representation while data wrangling. It is common to see various spellings in the early modern documents, as you um, may be aware, that there are variations of person and place name spellings appearing in the catalog. And in order for me to make these names usable, creating a full list um, of names with a corresponding unique ID is crucial. So the example you can see here with the Alexander Brown, that we've given um, person XML ID um, Alexander Brown, and beneath that you can see um, various um, spellings of Alexander Brown. So now all persons and places mentioned in the catalog can be identified by the elements person name and um, place name. And by adding a um, ref attribute with a unique ID, all these names can be linked to the correct persons and places. Also, it can now be linked to a relevant database or external resources such as geonames. On to the Python scripts. So here are some um, examples of my Python scripts that have been used to extract and transform the data. These are doing data cleanup, extracting targeted data, as well as inserting ref attribute to the catalog. Sorry, okay. Following um, running of the script shown on the previous slide, we are able to create the data output you see before you. So there are approximately four, um, 1400 catalog records containing um, place and person names. And out of these catalog records, there are about a thousand person names and just under a thousand name and place names that we found. And now on to um, linking with the CDOC CRM. So this is my first attempt to model people and places. Linking with an ontology will improve the existing data model in TIXML because it can show how people, place or even objects are related to each other. Also, we would like to explore to what extent linking between TIXML documents and external ontologies, such as CDOC CRM, can facilitate understandings of Sloan's intellectual legacies. So looking for context, the TIXML catalog does not really explain how person and place names are related. So for instance, when I see um, country names such as China, it's not obvious to me whether this name is linked to a person or an object in the catalog entry. So I have gone through a sample of entries looking for patterns to see if there's a possibility of automating extraction of this relationship. So now moving on to challenges of my research project. So we have learned a lot from the process of extracting the targeted data from the TIXML. So dealing with the various spellings and person and place names, it's been really particularly challenging and also time consuming. And furthermore, we 
data really require a domain expert to do this. Uh, anomalies and ambiguous and inconsistencies. So, so there are certain ambiguous and inconsistent cases within the catalog. And some of these are legacy errors and inconsistencies from 300 years ago. And one of the examples is the duplicate irregular cataloging numbers that have been used. A no standardized approach taken when encoding person and place names. So it is to a large extent, it was um, it was up to the encoders to decide what was to be captured as a country. And inevitably, over the course of a few years of encoding, the type of um, sorry, it keeps moving. Um, so it's a type of um, like a place name captured this um, inconsistent. So therefore, for the data sets I have created, for that to be meaningful, and uh, more manual inspection of the data is necessary in my view. And the last one I'd like to highlight is the, um, the lack of documentation. Research contribution. So enhancing the existing data model. So my research had flagged some of the issues that needed to be addressed, as well as um, I was able to fixing some of them. And linking with the CEDOC CRM will also be beneficial to the existing model. By linking the person and place names to external resources, such as Wikidata and Geonames I mentioned earlier, it will enrich and make the existing TIXML more interoperable. And providing new index for the digital edition of um, the miscellaneous catalog is the immediate reuse of this data set because it can be used as alphabetical index to names and places in the digital editions of um, Sloan's Miscellanea. Because at the moment, the index available online is non functioning due to the complexity of the data. And contributing to the existing authority files of person names for the early modern period and bringing collections and data together, that's particularly important for Sloan's collections as um, they've been dispersed and sold or lost over the years. And bringing collections and um, so data together, by doing that, um, I think we are ultimately improving access. Okay, so I'm gonna end with, um, oh, sorry, keeps switching. So I'm gonna end with two possible future projects I have in mind. So the first one is connecting to the British Museum's um, collection online. And the second one is analysis of the network of places and people who are linked to Sloan's collections. So I'm gonna expand on the first one to just give you a little bit of context is um, because there are um, Sloan's collections available on British Mu Museum's collection online. However, the object entries we see in his original catalogs cannot be matched easily to the, um, the BM's catalog entries. So, so the image you see is the, um, it's the entry for chocolate, Salon's chocolate cups. So um, while um, people were encoding, they actually came across this chocolate cup um, entry in his manuscript. So for me, as a next research project, a mapping can be done to create um, synergy between the BM database and the Salon's catalog. And thank you for listening.